Today, we'll be talking about the smug man himself, Roland, the newest transcendent, arriving in the Ever Night Beat update. And if you don't want to miss future PCR guys and videos, don't forget to subscribe and also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash writer 2 b and if I make any corrections or forget to mention something, it'll be the pinned comment down below. Alright, let's roll into it. Roland Flambeau is an S-Rank Transcendent that deals mainly fire damage and features AoE burst damage, crowd control, range damage, and a facelift that a plastic surgeon can only dream of performing. Like damn, I almost can't hate him. Almost. And in this video, I'll cover his skills, passives, ascensions, playstyle, weapons, and my pull and build recommendations. And as usual, I'll leave timestamps if you want to jump to a specific topic. Going through his kit, Roland has a completely different orb system, because of course he does. His basic attacks is a 4 hit melee attack string, dealing physical damage, and like Cheng Yu, he has a white orb positioned in the first orb slot. And how it works is basically after a certain amount of basic attacks, a corresponding white orb will light up and you can ping it to do a follow up attack. And basically, more hits give more gauge to do more damage. So for example, after 2 hits, the white orb is a kick and slash, dealing physical damage. After 3 hits, the white orb is a forward spin, dealing physical damage. And after 4 hits, the white orb is a leap and uppercut spin, dealing fire damage. These follow up basic attacks work in tandem with his core passive, so I'll go over that next. It's indicated by the gauge at the bottom of the screen, and it passively increases his basic attack combo damage. Basically, after you fill up the gauge by basic attacking enemies, depending on whatever white orb you pinged, you'll get a certain amount of gauge meter. Orbs can be obtained by expending this gauge, and with each orb taking a third of the gauge to use. And expending the orbs will grant significant energy towards his ult. And some other things covered in his core passive, Roland will always enter the field with two thirds of his gauge filled, and if you matrix, then orbs will not consume or cost any gauge to activate. If I could simplify this further into a TLDR, it would basically be basic attack to proc the white orb, filling up the gauge, use the orbs to consume the gauge, build ultimate, and then stonks. I'll cover the full rotation more in depth in the playstyle section of the video. Next, let's look into his orbs. His regular orbs have two different levels. The first level consumes a third of his regular gauge, and the second level consumes two thirds of his regular gauge, and you'll need to proc it quickly after using the first level orb. His red orb is his AoE melee burst damage, and his level 1 does a quick fire slash dealing, well, fire damage, and his level 2 hits twice as hard, dealing more fire damage in a forward sweep. So it's recommended that you commit to the level 2 red for the increased damage. His blue orb is his ranged ability. At level 1, Roland quickly fires his gun, shooting an explosive projectile, dealing fire damage, and note that this has unlimited range and will hit as long as there's a locked target, and at level 2, he'll fire a second AoE round that pulls in enemies. It's not really used for the most part due to low damage, but you can use the level 2 to help group enemies. His yellow orb is his gap closing ability. His level 1 is an uninterruptible dash, ending in multiple kicks, dealing fire damage. This is also his swap and attack. And his level 2 has a sweep kick and a brief stun, dealing fire damage as well. It's pretty decent for single target, and both levels are pretty decent to proc. As for his ultimate, Roland becomes invincible for a brief period and spins a fire blade around him, dealing fire damage. His abilities and regular gauge become their ultimate variants, and the ultimate gauge will start to slowly drain in this form, and abilities and basic attacks will consume from this gauge. And he gets a free incinerating orb on the 5th slot, which will launch multiple fire projectiles in front of him, dealing fire damage. Now, let's finally look at his orb abilities inside of his ult. And note that these still scale off the orb levels, but I want to cover them later to keep it from being a little bit too confusing. His red orb consumes a fourth of his ult gauge to do an uninterruptible vortex move, like in his boss fight, dealing massive AoE fire damage in front of him. His yellow orb consumes a fourth of his ult gauge to do two kicks, launching two flaming fireballs, dealing fire damage, and stunning his target. And his blue orb consumes a fourth of his ult gauge to do an AoE sweep, dealing fire damage. Usually you want to spam the red or yellow orbs since they have higher damage or stun. Blue and basic attacks and ultimate are pretty mid and aren't really used due to their low scaling and lack of utility. Also, don't forget to use the free 5th incinerating orb. Again, it doesn't cost anything to use, and it's strong due to Roland's set, so use it before it disappears, because when the ult gauge depletes, it's gone. And as for his QTE, he does that Spider-Man swing from the boss fight, dealing fire damage in the line. Quickly going over his leader passive, it increases the team's fire damage and transcendent damage, and as for his ascensions, at double S, he gets increased damage on his regular non-ultimate orbs, and he gets two free orbs on top of the free one he already gets when he goes into Matrix. And at triple S, the gauge limit is increased, and he gains more charges on swap in, and he also gains more ult energy when expending orbs to charge a stronger ultimate. And at triple S plus, it's basically a damage increase in his ultimate and his orbs, but its free matrix passive works well alongside the double S passive. And S rank is usually enough investment for most players, especially if you're strapped on black cards. For those who want to push Roland in specific difficult content and have the spare black cards, you can double S for higher orb uptime after matrix, and therefore build ultimate faster. 
or even triple S to supercharge his kit to build ult even faster than that and increase its damage. But again, he's perfectly functional at S, and you just lose the quality of life and added damage. And as for his builds, he comes with his own set, so use it. As for resonance, yellow orb in the top row if you're spamming it, or you could settle for attack if you're lazy. And ultimate on the bottom row. Hypertune is only necessary on the bottom row if you do decide to hypertune him. And to quickly run to his weapons, for the 4-star weapon, no. For the 5-star weapon, for those not planning to invest or play Roland too much, his 5-star weapon is enough to do damage. And a 6-star or signature weapon, for those who are seriously planning to play and use Roland, is highly recommended as it adds not only fire damage, but remove dodge cooldown, and triggers a special attack indicated in orange after dodging. And as for his 6-star weapon resonance priority, focus limit break, and then signal overload and matrix burst. And as for his place down rotation, Roland is special in that he really doesn't have much downtime in the way that his kit is designed, and note that his awakening ability basically gives him a full gauge at the start of battle. So start by burning his orbs, and then weave in basic attacks and using white orbs to generate even more of the orbs, and since his basic attacks deal physical damage and don't have great scaling anyways, it's mainly used to trigger the white orbs to quickly fill up that gauge. And after you burn your orbs, you build your ult really quickly due to his core passive, and even faster if you're able to matrix for more 3 orb pings. And once you ult, burn his free 5th orb, and half a second you can cancel the animation, and spam the other orbs, usually red or yellow, until the ultimate is gone. Honestly, sometimes I forget to swap off him due to his minimal downtime, but it makes him one of the best transcendents to solo content with for this reason. And despite all of his various skills, he really doesn't have to deal with orb RNG or expensive ultimates, so you can really just use whatever ability you need in this situation. If you need to gap close, CC, or you're in single target, use the yellow orb, you need burst damage and AoE, use the red orb, or you need a ranged attack, then use the blue orb. And as for my pull and build recommendations, despite Roland being a strong transcendent, at the end of the day, he will still be a transcendent. And if you're a free to play or a person who just started after launch and is still trying to catch up on S rank characters, it's safe to skip them. Roland has a future potential in future fire teams as an attacker substitute, but eventually gets phased out of that role fairly quickly due to better options later on. And I'll cover this more in detail once the time arrives, but for now, I'll just leave it at that. And if you like him, then go for him. He's got strong, reliable damage with minimal downtime and is great for stuff like solo babble that values survivability and damage, but again, he's not going anywhere, he just becomes a permanent 80% rate up once this update ends. And if there's any updates or corrections, I'll leave in a pinned comment down below. Subscribe so you don't miss future guys and videos, and if you found this video informative, drop a like. I dislike you did it. I'll probably do a monthly pack giveaway stream before or around Christmas at twitch.tv slash spider2b, as well as a giveaway on my Discord at discord.io slash so come by if you want a chance to win. And uh, yeah, sorry for the super late upload, I've been molding with finals and final projects among other things, and it's just a lot to cover with Roland, so surely consistent upload schedule from now on. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching this past year, happy holidays, and peace late.